Hello and welcome to Up Against the Brick Wall. My name is Derek Cutter and today's topic we're going to be focusing on the new generation of artists and rethinking how masculinity and art are intertwined in our culture. So I want to introduce today's panelists with me. We've got Cole Timko and John Wynn and uh, I'm going to let you guys introduce yourselves as artists here to the crowd. Yeah, uh, my name is John Wynn. Um, I'm mostly involved with a lot of uh, choral, choral pieces. I've sang in a lot of choral ensembles. Um, I've sang in chamber choir here at St. John's University, and also currently I'm in Johnny Blendit, uh, all male a cappella group. Advertising. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Cole Timko. I'm a part of an electronic duo called Harmony. Um, we make electronic music, but I also like. I'm pretty involved in art in general. I have an interest in film and uh, music. Music's like my specialty, but really, I just kind of obsess over the way art makes you feel something. So mm -hmm. I don't really limit myself to any medium. That's wonderful. Well, like I said, I'm Derek Cutter, and uh, from NDI, I'm a sculptor. So um, with that, tell us a little bit about how you think our campus is supportive to artists or could be more supportive to artists encouraging men to be artists? Um, I think that being an artist is a very um, uh, all-encompassing term. Um, we are consumers of everything media related, entertainment, um, even art in like the traditional sense. And what I think that art is is like um, the studies of, of uh, paintings, sculptures, um, kind of uh, forming your own style as a person. Mm -hmm. um, here. I, I believe that we could be even more encouraging, um, but it's kind of hard to define what that means um, because you can go in your car and listen to, to music and stuff like that and then afterwards you might have an idea of what you want to do if you're, you're an up-and-coming songwriter. You just go to your guitar, get a piece of uh, pen and paper and then just write it out. Um, but I feel like we could be a little bit more encouraging um, because not a lot of people would know uh, or pursue that sort of, uh, that sort of uh, area um, if it weren't for other people around them. Mm -hmm. I think uh, nowadays there's like a big focus on STEM fields and um, mm -hmm. I think that there's less of a focus on how art plays into like just the basic functions of society and so I think that the education system is built off that to an mm -hmm. extent. I think that there is obviously avenues for artists and art loving students to pursue that um, but I think that like I would like to see schools have a just influx of more creative resources available to students. I'd like to see studios being built on camp. You know what I mean? I'd like to see art mm -hmm. be something that if a student feels they want to try and create art on a campus, on an institution of learning, that's something that they can just go do. Whereas opposed to like, I don't know, I just feel like it's, it's really hard to think of something and then get that idea out. I don't think that we have mm -hmm. the environment that that's most easy to happen, but I don't know that that's something that I don't I don't know what that looks like but I think that sure. in terms of the way our education system is built that we could help students more pursue art but I don't think that it's that we're limiting them in any way sure mm -hmm. well, uh, <clears throat> another thing worth noting is uh, none of the three of us are art majors or minors um, so what aspect uh, do you do you feel that as somebody who isn't an art major or an art minor on campus there's still uh, plenty of opportunities for you to express yourself kind of going on what Cole was saying with the idea of additional studio spaces and John, what you were saying about making it easier for students to pursue art. Um, you know, how do we do that for students like ourselves who aren't necessarily art majors or art minors, but are still have a passion for art? Um, I would say a lot of people um, uh, are kind of, they won't really take the risk um, because maybe the, the, the learning uh, the learning opportunities or like the learning environment is not necessarily there. Mm -hmm. um, like for me, for example, I like to play guitar in my apartment and that's it. And I don't like to share that with everybody else because I might be a little bit self-judgmental um, mm -hmm. and, and self-critique myself a lot. Um, but we have clubs like Noteworthy, for example, in which they are, are for musicians and then we have Art Club. Um, but kind of bringing to like the liberal arts experience um, that in itself for, for artists in general, whether you're a painter, sculptor, um, enjoy even a history of art um, and kind of discussing that with other people. Um, it, it's kind of hard to define what that is because we, we can encompass a lot of, a, a singular person can encompass so many ideals. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. Um, I guess personally, like in terms of pursuing art in that way, I didn't, I guess it's my senior year now, and for the first time I feel like I'm taking classes that are actually 
related to art in the way that I wanted them to. I'm taking like a film class that I'm getting to make the films or make the kind of stuff I want to do later on in my career. And I started like as a, I came in here as a bio music double major, like thinking I was going to go pre-med. <laughs> um, now I'm a German studies major and that's it. And like <laughs> those, those STEM fields. <laughs> exactly. No, right? Exactly. But I, for me, there was this, there's this moment really this year where I kind of said to myself, like, I've taken all these classes and worked towards this degree, but I've not, I've really not taken the risk, kind of like John said, to take a class that I, I was curious about and passionate mm -hmm. about. And it's one of my favorite classes. I think that like the resources and the opportunities are out there. It really just comes down to taking that steps for some people and saying like, maybe this is something I want to pursue. Maybe this is something I'm interested in for a reason and I want to see what I can get out of it. Sure. It sounds like to me, you're both saying that kind of a, uh... There's a, there's a level where we as people need to view ourselves as artists and view ourselves as able to create these sorts of things. Um, does that seem fair to say that, that maybe that's, that's missing? I think uh, yes and a little bit of both. I think that there's some people that have like a uh, more of a art focused brain and then some people might have more of like a not that facts is the opposite of art but some people more ha might have more like of a facts based brain and that there's opportunities that, that right to, brain versus left it's, brain. yeah it's kind of like a right brain versus left brain some mm -hmm. people are maybe more right brain dominant some people are more left brain dominant but I think that uh, personally I try to look at how can I be a best mix of the two and mm -hmm. so I look at some of the my favorite people some of the most inspiring people to me are not artists but like doctors mm -hmm. and it's the doctors that see their work as an art because it's Someone like a doctor has this crazy cap or capacity for facts in their brain and they have an obvious like technical advantage over someone who's not a doctor, but it's when you step beyond that and see your work as an art and the, I, I think there's some there's a beauty to that and there's a putting more of a meaning into it and I think that that's something that we could all take value from. So kind of to switch topics here, but direct it a little bit. Um, how do you guys feel as artists and as men that your masculinity and your art have been in relationship to each other? That being either your masculinity influenced by your art or your art being influenced by your masculinity? Yeah, I would say as a, as a singer, it, it definitely helps, um, uh, especially through the process of puberty, um, because they obviously have like tenor, bass, and I sang baritone in, in high school for a while. And after that transition, um, having that masculinity affect my art um, kind of proved like a reverse relationship because through singing um, it kind of empowered myself to kind of be out there and be be uh, kind of promote more like healthy masculine lifestyle um, especially with with you know being a bass and, and singing but it doesn't necessarily have to be a bass to to be a healthy masculine lifestyle you can be a tenor as well and then having that influence your art is a is a good way to to have that relationship together uh, for me personally there's kind of uh an inherent masculine component to my art, um, but I try to tr step back from that um, and look at how gender and gender roles influence art in general, because I think that art is often a medium for a message to be uh, portrayed. And so I think that I try to look at how my masculinity and how gender in general affect me and how they make me, th how certain things make me feel, certain situations I may be in, and then try to capture that feeling and somehow portray it through my art and that's so for me I guess a lot of my art comes from uh, maybe what I experience and so there's a masculine component to that but uh, yeah kind of like I said I do really try to step back from gender in general and I try to look at just what feelings are being conveyed in my art because I think that feelings are something you can um, identify with regardless of whether you are a more masculine person or more feminine person. I don't mm -hmm. think those those words have any grasp on what ca how capable you are of feeling something. I think that's a really important idea, especially because sometimes men are encouraged to not feel as much and in all senses, not just in the art world, but I think that that's a really good point that art can be a way for men to explore that emotional connection to the world. Um, another thing, um, Art has been historically dominated by men as artists, but we've kind of seen a transition, especially during our lifetimes, in which art has become dominated by women, um, and to the point where sometimes men are disencouraged or you know um, told to stay away from art or judged for being artists. Um, have you encountered any challenges with that or any uh, discrimination at all? 
Um, personally, I would say no. Uh, well, that's because uh, a lot of the, I'm going into like econ and, and Spanish and stuff like that. So it's completely kind of different um, in the art in the traditional sense. Um, but I like to promote it as like a hobby of sorts. Mm -hmm. um, I guess for me, uh, there's always the, the little bit of pushback, I guess. Uh, when I first told my parents I wanted to pursue art as like my career, there's always, there's that like, okay, but what do you want your real job to be? <laughs> like, like, there's, there's a, a little bit of a, a belief that art maybe isn't as profitable or maybe societally beneficial as some of the other career choices. But I think that like one of the things tied into that, or I guess one, th one new idea that we've seen with art is that it can be maybe more of an outlet for people to pursue. And um, I think to touch on the, the male dominated aspect of it, in my personal field, um, as a DJ, if you look at Ultra Music Festival, which is like the premier music festival, only 3% of the DJs there are women. And that's something that's like interesting to me because I totally see in other fields mm, women having more opportunity, but in this particular field, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see that. And some of my favorite, most talented musicians are, are women. And so I don't really have a full grasp on that, um, but I do think that there is a little bit of an inherent judgment that comes forth when someone says nowadays that they want to pursue art, but I do think that we're moving in the right direction and then that judgment and that like negative stigma is kind of starting to fade away. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good point. And uh, thank you both of you for being here today discussing art and your masculinity. Uh, thanks for everybody for tuning in. Uh, this has been Up Against the Brick Wall with Ben's Development focused on art. And uh, it's important to remember, like we've talked about today, uh, art can really be anything, and every single person has that creative side, that expressive side, those emotional feelings to express. And uh, it's important, whether it be through art or just in a different way, to allow that expression to come through and be honest. So, again, thanks for tuning in. And uh, if you would like to see more of this discussion, there's an extended release on our YouTube page. The link will be in the description below. Thanks, and uh, tune in next week.